time in this century that men will walk on the moon. But space exploration will continue. The benefits of space exploration will continue and there will be new dreams to pursue based on what we have learned. So let us not mistake the significance nor miss the majesty of what we have witnessed. Few events have ever marked so clearly the passage of history from one epoch to another. If we understand this about the last flight of Apollo, then truly we shall have touched a many splendored thing. Between 1966 and the very last flight with the space shuttle, there was always a battle rhythm in flight operations at the Johnson Space Center, a battle rhythm. I mean, we were doing something now, we're gonna do something next, and it's on, it's, it's in front of us. It's there, you gotta go get it done. 11, 10, nine, ignition sequence start. I don't think the battle rhythm is there today. You know, after we landed on the moon, I knew that by 1995, and certainly before the year 2000, humans would be on Mars. No doubt in my mind. I don't think we should have ever given up the moon, ever. I mean, we were there at one time, and we should have continued to go there, and we should have stayed there. We had a space station plan that was going to support Mars, be a transportation, mo a transportation node on orbit, we we're going to fly up rockets on smaller rockets, assemble stuff in space, and go to Mars or go to the moon. George Abbey wanted to set up a colony on the moon right after we had the Saturn V's, and that never came to uh, fruition. Everything just came together for Apollo, the, the threat of the Cold War. The superiority, apparently, of the Soviet Union's technology came together to cause the public, the Congress, and the administration to say, we got to do this. I, I have to admit that we would probably never have gone to the moon when we did, or ever, without the politics. We did Apollo wrong. We should have done it in a more gradual step fashion of development of vehicles which when we got through would have allowed us to do one heck of a lot more than rather than get to the end and stop and say I'm finished. You know, it's just human nature to focus on your accomplishments and kind of ignore where you look back and say you were kind of dumb. I would not second guess what Kennedy did. But in many respects, his jumping out to go to the moon rather than come on with Gemini to a space station, then to L1, then to the moon. Probably if we hadn't even done Apollo, we might be better off. The investment in the accomplishment of what we did, the impression it had on the rest of the world, and it, the impression of the fact that the United States is the greatest place and the greatest society. Yeah, I did all that, I agree with that but it could have been done differently and then allowed us to do one hell of a lot more than we did. And we'd still be doing it and gaining from what we did then and what we could do with, with the development then of more technology. I just, that's the way I would have done it. But I didn't have that choice. I didn't have a clear vision of where we are going, but I thought we would continue to go kind of at the rate we'd been at. And instead, what I saw was just this enormous slowdown. You know, as we were trying to get shuttles designed, built, flying. Uh, and then, you know, here comes Space Station along. I wasn't the least bit interested in dealing with Space Station. We'd already done that. Uh, so, it, yeah, it's a disappointment. The Johnson Space Center decided it, it wanted to have a space station. I remember Al Levere calling about 40 of us together in building 226 in the back lot saying the reason you guys are here is because we're going to write a program plan for a space station. I couldn't have been happier.
And now we have a space station that, in my view, mostly does nano-sized experiments so that intellectuals can write up, can perform a nano-sized experiment, write up a paper and put it in their CV. Which really honks them off when you say that, by the way. I never dreamed that, uh, especially when we got into the space station at, at Johnson Space Center, the one that I worked on for six years, that we were, I said, we're on our way to Mars. We're on our way to the moon. We've got a plan. Well, we are, <laughs> we are, we are so far from f sending humans to Mars, in my opinion, today. We've got so many things we've got to, we've got to deal with. You've got to figure out how to, you know, how, how are these people going to live and eat and feed and dump trash and, 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 and radiation and all this stuff. How are we going to do that? To do a three-year mission to Mars is a 30-year program. It's money and politics. Congress can cherry-pick Orion or they can cherry-pick SLS. You have no arching contract. They can, they can cancel either one of those or both of them, no problem. In the human spaceflight program, we, we can't seem to pick what it is we need to go do and stick with it long enough to go get it done. If we truly believe that Mars is the next thing or whatever, well, okay, good luck with that. We say we've got commercial spacecraft, commercial rockets. It's, that's not what it is. It's, it's government money that they're spending. People say, well, let's do it, let's do the commercial, let the commercial people do it and uh, get NASA out of it or NASA can just observe and they can go do something else. You can't do that, you don't do it that way. When you say SpaceX is gonna do it or Boeing is gonna do it, they're not doing it. The United States is doing it. So let's do what is best in the best interest of the country with the best people to do it, which includes the commercial people, along with the government people. In practical terms, the space agency, NASA, and the nation got tremendous facilities that we still use today. Granted, we had to update them and keep them up and that sort of thing, but look, we're still launching rockets off the Apollo launch pads, okay, for crying out loud. But I really think the inspiration is what is the most important thing. If, if we could do that then, think what we can do tomorrow. And that's got to inspire people in school today and all the rest of us. Not just about space exploration, but about whatever endeavor we're about. It's a, it's a tremendous legacy that in America, if we put our minds to it, we can do the impossible. help but feel like you know I did I, I was a part of that and I thought you know my part was so this is such a huge thing and my part was so tiny and I'm just stuck here on earth and once it's taken off there's nothing I can do about anything your part's small but it has to work and and it matters so I, I didn't ever treat anything they asked me to do trivially on the landing day I, I, I was on another shift so I was at home had these two little kids sitting on my lap and saying, now watch this, you kids watch this, because this is history being made. Nobody in, the, in history has ever done this. This is the first time this is gonna happen and I want you to remember this all your life. thing that sticks to me is that black and white image of, uh, of the guys taking the first steps on the moon and uh, watching that with my kids. 
but it uh, it was just an amazing sight, and and the fact that the whole world was kind of watching, best I can tell, and, and as was reported, just think that you've been a part of something that that the whole world kind of stops and looks at. <laughs>